Well, boys, this was an absolutely generational week. As you see by the title, I just had my best week ever in a Discord, or just on price picks in general. After 42 weeks, we have cleared a 120 unit month. Still have some slips to settle, but it's going to be around there. And for the full tally on price picks, it was about plus 70 units. And on underdog, it's plus 50 units. A unit is whatever you're putting on a standard slip. So if that's $5, you made about $350 on price picks and $250 on underdog. And it was even more than that because I did cash this $20 protected NFL lineup. That gives you a $200, aka 40 units for those $5 betters. So plus 110 for those guys there. I was running codes all weekend and I said you do not want to miss out on this week of picks. And a lot of you guys did take advantage of those codes and signed up. So you got to get these beautiful profits over the weekend. These are some of the slips we cash. This one was a 53x on underdog. Then we also had some other slips. I mean, I could just scroll through the whole week. We hit 325x's, 810x. We hit all kinds of 8.5x's. It was to the point where it was literally the best week ever. You can see how it's reflected in my profits graph. I got plus 780 units over the 42 weeks I've been running Discord. And you see this massive spike. We basically went up from 628 all the way up to 780 in the past few weeks here. Absolutely insane run. I do expect it to slow down, of course, but no matter what, we're going to be in the profit in the long run, as this graph does show you right here. So if you do want to start making money on price picks or underdog, join the Discord first thing in the description. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about this for the next 10 minutes. Let's get straight into the recap and the picks for today. So Saturday night's video, I went for the stack on the double under on Colorado. That one did hit, but unfortunately, this one did split with Burks and Arnold. So close on that one, three and one, but we could not get that 8.5x. Then I believe this was the second sip I gave out. Unfortunately, the stack with the over on the completions and receptions went the opposite direction. But you can see how these guys did hit together. We just went for the more more instead of the less less. And that's what didn't pay off. Same thing with Oregon, though. We went for the unders here. Easy cash. Tej Johnson minus one receiving yards. Very, very nice on that one. Unfortunately, though, we did not get that full green slip. We're going to see what we could do for tonight in Monday Night Football. I'm going to be building out two different game scripts. The first slip is going to have three NFL props and one tennis prop. The second one is going to have two NFL props and two MLB props. Let's start with this first game script I'm going for. And that's going to be a San Fran lead with touchdowns. So we're going with Brock Purdy on his under passing yards. But they just say we're going for a winning script here. If the 49ers are in the lead, they will probably be running the ball more within the second half, which means less passing yards for Purdy. Yes, technically, you have to be getting passing yards to get in the lead in the first place if you're going up the field and getting touchdowns, but you'll definitely see that slowdown effect in the second half. I mean, it happens all the time. So we're going to go to Brock Purdy under 240 and a half passing yards. What I like about this line is he's also set too high on price picks. I see him at 237 and a half on FanDuel, 235 and a half on DraftKings, 234 and a half on Caesars, 234 and a half on BetMGM. So he's basically hovering around 235 and a half on most other sports books. We're getting five extra yards of protection on that. So I am loving the under on Brock Purdy to start it. So to pair Brock Purdy up, if he's going under his 240 and a half passing yards, we want to be pairing that up with one of his main targets. And in this team, we have a couple here. We have Ayuk, we have Devo Samuel, and we have George Kittle. I explained this in my previous video this weekend, but I normally like to take teams that have that one main target. Like the Jets, you know, they only have really one main target that they're going to be passing the ball to. That's Garrett Wilson, of course. But I actually still like the pairing between Purdy and Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel set at about 48 and a half across all the sports books. Not really much discrepancies there. I do see him at 47 and a half on DraftKings, Caesars, and BetMGM. So we're getting one point of value there. But realistically, it's about a 50 50 prop. What really enhances it is when you're pairing it up with Brock Purdy, which is exactly what we're doing. Calculated the correlation between Brock Purdy with all of his targets, and Debo Samuel is the highest one at 0.64. So I am liking this stack here. Now, if we're expecting a lead for the 49ers, we want that lead to be coming from touchdowns. Coming from field goals, the game is probably still tight, and Brock Purdy is still going to have to be passing the ball. If they're up by a touchdown or even two touchdowns, we're going to see a big run game from CMC instead. So to continue this correlation stack, we want to go with Jake Moody on his under kicking points or finding score. Originally, he was at seven and a half, and that's what I would have liked to get him at. There's still decent value in his seven kicking points, but I think there's even more value in his fantasy score, which is set at eight and a half. Now, the main way to get fantasy score or kicking points in general is through field goals. You're going to get three kicking points for a field goal, of course. And for fantasy scores, you could get up to five kicking points for a field goal. So you could see here, plus three from zero to 39 yards plus four for 40 to 49 yards, and you get five fantasy points for 50 plus yards. So based on that, it's important to see what the books are actually projecting for the 49ers team totals tonight. And you're going to see 23 and a half with juice towards the over. So they're expected to get about 24 points tonight. And if they're getting 24 points tonight, that's probably somewhere around three touchdowns and one field goal made. So if they do get three touchdowns and one field goal made, of course, we cash the under eight and a half fantasy score. We would also cash the under kicking points. 
because you're going to get three for a field goal and you're also going to get another three for the extra points after the touchdown so in that perfect scenario with three touchdowns and a field goal we cash both of these it doesn't really matter so three tds and a field goal is what i think will probably happen but let's say we want to be safe and he does end up getting two field goals well we could still cash on a fantasy score prop if that does happen but we won't cash on the kicking points because if he does get two field goals that's six points they're probably gonna get at least one touchdown we're gonna get a push on the kicking points but for the fantasy score if the 49ers get two field goals and two touchdowns it's still possible to cash the under eight and a half assuming those field goals are some shorter ones here from zero to 39 yards which is the average in the nfl so let's say two field goals that's gonna be plus three plus three you're at six and then two extra points conversions from the touchdowns are gonna bring him to eight and we still cash just under eight and a half fantasy score so great prop there and it even correlates with the fact that we're expecting a touchdown game for the 49ers of course a touchdown basically takes away an opportunity for a field goal so if there is three four touchdowns there's going to be less field goals because of that and he's only going to get the fantasy score off those extra point conversions so if you compare the fantasy score and the kicking points you're essentially getting an extra touchdown of protection with the fantasy score prop we definitely want to be all over that now to finish the slip off i'm going to go over to tennis and i'm not going to get into detail why i'm taking this pick i know you guys are here for the nfl but we're going with this girl here rakimova on her under four and a half break points one all you gotta know is i'm hitting tennis props at like a 60 percent rate and specifically this break point one props i'm hitting at like a 65 percent rate so i'm very confident in this pick right here stack it up with the 49ers unders and you got a beautiful slip that's going to pay you 10x as a four power now this is the first slip we're still going to make a second one with the jets players and the first guy i'm eyeing is actually Bree hall on his under five and a half receiving targets now the reason for this is his receptions line is at a four and a half on various other sports books with heavy 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 juice towards the under i could show you on bet 365 just for example he said at four and a half with juice towards the under all the way up on minus 150 and i've checked other sports book it goes all the way up to like minus 160 minus 170 even up to minus 180 which basically means for him to get four or less receptions is very likely or at least more likely than it is for him to get five or more so i'd love to have Brees hall at the under four and a half receptions but he's set at four on price picks so a nice alternative to that is actually his targets i'll show you some stats right here Brees hall last season caught about 80 percent of his passes overall catching percentage of 75.4 percent so if he does go under that four and a half receptions mark and gets even exactly four receptions well, he most likely did get five targets because he's going to be catching 85% of the passes thrown to him. But I'll take this a step further because last year, the Jets had Zach Wilson as their QB, who only completed about 60.1% of his passes last season and only 57% over his career. Now, if we compare that over to Aaron Rodgers, the last season he played was a 64.6% completion rate and his overall pass completion rate is 65.3%. So if Brees Hall was catching 80% of his catches last year from Zach Wilson, I think this number could be even higher, up to 85%. So what I'm basically saying is I wouldn't be surprised if Brees Hall got four receptions on four targets. We even have that fifth one as insurance if we need it, but I could easily see a scenario where he gets four out of five tonight or even four out of four, still cashing us on that under receiving targets. Again, because his under four and a half receptions is more likely to go under, his under five and a half targets would also be very likely to go under. So that's why I'm going with this Brees Hall pick. And if we're already grabbing an under on a good targets prop, we might as well pair that up with his QB on his under pass attempts. Because if Aaron Rodgers is not getting a lot of pass attempts, that's even less opportunities for Brees Hall to get targets. It's the same exact concept as going under passing yards with under receiving yards, except now we're going with the attempts and targets. I am liking this line at 34. I do think it should be set at 33 and a half. I see multiple other sports books at 33 and a half with that 50-50 juice. At 34, we get that push protection, so I'm not mad at that at all. That is going to be the stack that I'm going with on the Jets. Now to end it off, I'm just going to go over with the MLB and make a slight stack here on the Pittsburgh Pirates. I'm going with Brian Reynolds on his under one and a half total bases. I see him at minus 135 on DraftKings, minus 133 on Bet Online, and basically a minimum of minus 125. So definitely juice towards the under. But what's going to make this even better is if we stack him up with O'Neill Cruz on his under one and a half total bases. This also has heavy juice towards the under. Minus 135 on DraftKings and minus 130 across the whole board. And, and the whole idea here is since these guys are at the top of the order, if the Pirates team is not doing well as a whole, well, these guys are going to get less at-bats than expected. Meaning since their lines are set at one and a half, maybe they were expected five at-bats. If they end up getting four at bats each, that makes both these guys more likely to go under their one and a half total bases because they're basically going to get as many at bats as each other because they're so close to each other in the lineup and because they're both at the top of the order. So, very good juice on this, a little bit of correlation. And then we have this beautiful stack over on the Jets. Let's lock this one in for a second 10x.